Hello everyone and welcome to National 5 and High Art Cycle of Analysis. This is going to be the first look at the cycle of analysis, the introduction to investigation. Our learning intentions for this today is going to be that we gain a holistic or well-rounded understanding of this process, okay? How we're going to be successful, hopefully we, by the end of it we understand the appropriateness of the methods that we've chosen with relation to the activity, the factor that we're looking at and the context that that factors were placed in. We can recognise and understand how appropriateness and practicality can actually affect the data gathering process. And we're going to explore briefly the differences between quantitative and qualitative testing. If we take a quick look at the cycle of analysis then, it starts always with the investigative stage where we gather data on our performance and then once we've got that, we can then go on and interpret those results. Once we've interpreted those results, we then go on to form our personal development program to try and improve those weaknesses. Throughout the PDP, we're going to monitor our progress uh, through recording and maybe get some feedback. We might want to make some changes to our, our PDP. But at the end of it, we're going to evaluate it and see if it has actually improved our performance in the area that we've wanted to investigate. And then we've got a choice to make at the very end. We can either go back to the start and repeat the process if we feel that it hasn't addressed the area of weakness enough, or we can go on and look at a different area. So it's just the next steps. It's important to note that during this course, you're gonna look at the cycle of analysis process in relation to all four factors, so you're going to look at it for mental, emotional, social and physical. Today, however, we are going to examine the first part of the cycle of analysis, the investigative stage. So very quickly, why do we gather data in the first place? It's important to note that within the National 5 portfolio and higher exam, you are going to be asked to provide reasons why you used a particular method, okay? At National 5 level, you're going to be asked to explain and at a higher level, you're actually going to be asked to evaluate and justify, sometimes even evaluate, why you chose a particular method. Okay, but points to consider first and foremost. Have a quick read of these. Hopefully, those of you that are returning for hire recognise these from last year within National 5. Okay, these are just some of the reasons that we would gather data in the first place. It allows us a very, very crucial stage at the beginning of our process so that we can gather data on our performance. Arguably the most important stage. So, we need to understand the appropriateness then of choosing a particular method to gather data. We're going to think about appropriateness here. So, the first thing we need to think about is, does the method that you're choosing actually measure the sub-factor that you're interested in? Okay, so for example, I want you to have a read at these following contexts um, and have a think about whether or not they make sense or not, okay? Okay, hopefully some of those stand out to you as fairly obvious choices, but also on the other hand, I'm hoping that a few of you are, are recognising that a few of those are absolutely terrible choices um, with regard to the context and the sub-factor. The sub-factors here being flexibility, strength, stamina, agility and power. Okay, some of those hopefully are quite obvious and good choices, but there's also some in there that are pretty poor and would not be appropriate for the, that particular context or sub-factor. It's important to note here that all the sub-factors I've mentioned on the right hand side of the page there are all from the physical factor. We will be looking at, over the course of the year, ways of gathering data on mental, emotional and social as well. Okay, so when it comes to understanding the appropriateness, I always use the R-A-V-E acronym. Okay, that allows me to remember um, the appropriateness of particular methods. So when we talk about this, the RAVE acronym, it starts with reliability. 
okay? Can you trust the results that the method provides? Are those results consistent? A refers to accuracy. Can you trust the person gathering the data on your performance? Do they actually have enough knowledge or experience to do this? That's all going to affect the accuracy. And was it recorded? Again, we might be able to get more accurate data if we're looking at a recording and not just a live performance. V refers to the validity of the method. Can the method be repeated again under exactly the same conditions, which might allow us to make comparisons a wee bit later on? Does the test actually measure what it's supposed to be measuring? I know that sounds silly, but you'd be surprised. And finally, is it a standardised test? So is it a test that's being used across the country, across the world? And finally, E refers to the ease of use or practicality. This refers to, is it a simple method to use and carry out? Okay, are the rules or protocols of the test easy enough to understand? So if we look at reliability in a little bit more detail, we've got a couple of questions we need to ask ourselves. So, if we think about, for example, the bleep test, does it provide a true reflection of our CRE? Are we likely to get the same types of results every single time we use this method? Did we actually gather enough data in the first place to paint a reliable picture of our levels of CRE? Did we actually have to collect it over more than one performance? And what type of data are we gathering? This refers to objective or subjective data. Referring back to the bleep test, this is more objective style data that we're gathering. But we'll talk about that um, shortly. The data that you've gathered could be based on someone else's opinion and therefore biased which might affect the reliability of the results. And there might be some other circumstances that we have to think about. For example, was the data collected in a challenging enough setting for you? You might not have appropriate levels of motivation or readiness to perform, which again could affect the reliability. You could be carrying an injury, which again is going to affect overall reliability. So have a quick read at this folks please, if you need to pause it, just pause it. So looking at the accuracy, again there's a few questions we need to think about. Where's the information coming from? Is the person that's gathering data on your performance knowledgeable enough to do this? Okay. Can we trust that person to do that job for us? And has it been recorded? Have we used an iPad or a phone to record the, the, the data so that we can look at it? Again, if you need to pause the video and have a read at this, please do so. So with, ref with reference to the validity, we need to think about, can the method be recreated under exactly the same conditions every single time? Now, if we think again about the blue test, Every single time we do that, we do it in the game saw. We have the cones set out exactly the same uh, distance apart, and we know exactly when the test starts and when the test finishes, okay? Which allows us to make comparisons if we're doing it more than once. So yes, we understand that it does have strict protocols we need to follow, okay? It is carried out in exactly the same way every single time, just like maybe, for example, a T10 test. But we need to also consider where the conditions of the test are appropriate for us. So maybe if we're thinking about um, gathering data on our badminton performance, are we playing against someone of a similar ability that's going to provide valid results for, for me? Okay, so again, have a read at this. If you need to pause the video, please do so. And finally, we talk about the ease of use of the method, the practicality. Now, there's many, many, many different ways of gathering data on performance, some very, very complicated, some relatively straightforward, but we always need to think about is, is the test easy to set up and carry out? That doesn't mean is the test easy to do, it just means is it easy to set up 
and carry out that process. Okay. We might want to think about if it requires any specialist equipment. Okay. If we think about the T10, it needs to be carried out in the pool in order to gather that information. Are the rules of the test easy enough to understand? Do we actually know what we have to do during the test? And do we even know when it's finished? Again, we know when the bloop test is finished, but for other tests, we might not know when that's actually complete for us. And then once we've got our data, is that easy enough to understand? Did we gather the data using tally marks or crosses or ticks? Did we have to answer true or false questions? And was the data in number form? So are we looking at distances or times or length, number of lengths? We might also have to think about, does the test need to be paid for? Hopefully it doesn't, but sometimes it might have to be. Do we need someone else to actually interpret the data for us? So do we need to have a teacher or a coach actually look at our data and give us the information to help us? And finally, is the test time consuming? These are all going to play into the ease of use or the practicality of the testing method. Okay, and finally, this last one. Again, if you need to pause the presentation, please do so and have a read this for me, please, folks. Okay, so we're going to very, very briefly look at quantitative and qualitative. Higher guys, you should have a basic understanding of these two terms. Also, for National 5, it's not going to do you any harm in understanding these terms, okay? So, both of these types will provide valuable information on your performance. When we talk about quantitative, that's the more objective style gathering method, okay? So we'll look at facts and figures, times, distances, in other words, numbers, okay? There's an example we might see. Whereas qualitative is more subjective and it's more based on people's thoughts and feelings or your thoughts and feelings. So people are providing opinions or judgments or reflections on your performance. There's an example of more qualitative style. Okay. I like to think about it as quantity and quality. That's how I remember it. Okay, but that's all, that's, we'll touch on this in a wee bit more detail later on, but that's just to give you an, an introduction to that. Okay, at this stage what we need to do is we need to check our knowledge. So the first task I'm going to ask you to do is using either the loop test or the T10 swim test, you can choose. You're going to describe in full how this test, we also can call it an analytical tool, is carried out. I want you to make four descriptive points, okay? Higher guys, I want you to do this in as much detail as possible. Remember to make reference to the who, the where, the what, the when, and the how. We do not need to talk about the why here. For task two, for the method you've just described, I want you to give four reasons, four explanations of why you chose to use that particular method. And to do this, I want you to use each of the points that we've just talked about from the RAVE acronym. Okay? Try to take five minutes for each point that you make. Okay, that's going to help. This is for higher guys. Try to take five minutes for the points that you make. Some things to help you out for, t for task two. At National 5, there's some sentence starters. Higher guys, you should recognise these already. But remember to structure your answer using the PIE structure that Mr. Gray went through last week, okay? And once you've done that, I'd like you to email your answers to your class teacher or put it up on the notebook section of our, your Microsoft Teams page. Okay, but that should give you enough information to carry out these tasks. Please go back and look at the slides um, that we talked about that have the red points in them, okay? The, the, the examples I gave you, they're going to help you form your answers, okay? Okay, thanks very much, folks. And we'll look at the second part of the cycle of analysis very soon.